Within just days after 3i Atlas made its close encounter with the Red Planet, the most powerful transmission emerging from our solar system wasn't electromagnetic at all. It came in the form of human words, a study released from China that didn't feel like another report. It felt like a verdict. Every translation, every official line carried the same weight, the kind that makes disbelief sound naive. Nothing about the object itself had changed, and yet somehow, everything had. You could hear it in the silence between words, see it in the careful faces of astronomers trying not to speak too soon. If this is what confirmation sounds like, then what exactly have we been denying all along? And why does it feel as though 3i Atlas has been patiently waiting for us to finally catch up? On July 1, 2025, the Survey Telescope Network's Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, ATLAS, located in Chile, recorded an unusual object moving rapidly through space. It was soon designated 3i ATLAS, officially marking it as the third known interstellar visitor to enter our solar system, following 1i slash Aumuamua and 2i Borisov. To understand the scale of this, interstellar objects are bodies whose orbits are not bound to the Sun. Their orbital eccentricity is greater than one, meaning their paths slice through our system only once before they continue their journey into the void. Their incredible speed and their direction of approach are clear indicators of an origin far beyond our own star's reach. From that moment, astronomers devoted countless telescope hours to studying 3i Atlas, measuring its brightness, tracking the expansion of its coma, and capturing detailed spectra. The object was moving quickly, with an estimated heliocentric velocity of over 200,000 kilometers per hour. But during a critical 36-hour period in late September, something remarkable happened. Nearly every major Western observatory fell silent at the same time. Hubble went offline for scheduled gyroscope recalibration. The James Webb Space Telescope shifted instruments and required thermal stabilization. The very large telescope in Chile paused for mirror cleaning, and both Gemini North and South were in scheduled downtime. Each pause was legitimate on its own, but together, they created a moment of near-total blindness. And it happened precisely as 3i Atlas passed into the sun's glare, the most important window for observing its activity. Any delay in those observations meant missing the exact timing and scale of its outgassing and dust emissions critical clues about the comet's origin and structure. While most of the Western Hemisphere's instruments were dark, a small cluster of observatories on the other side of the planet remained active. High-altitude stations in Tibet, Qinghai, and Yunnan, all part of China's network, continued running uninterrupted. Their observing schedules didn't overlap the Western maintenance cycle, allowing them to record every moment the others missed. That event became a stark reminder of a technical truth. Global coverage is only as strong as its weakest synchronized link. Even with dozens of world-class observatories, when a hemisphere goes quiet, fast-moving objects like 3i Atlas can slip through the cracks. For this comet, a single missed observation window could have erased essential data, the rate of outgassing, the dust-to-gas ratio, the morphology of the coma, the expansion of the tail, all vital pieces in reconstructing its story. While the blackout took hold, 3i Atlas continued its transformation. Its coma, the glowing envelope of gas and dust surrounding its core, began to expand rapidly. The coma forms when ices on the nucleus sublimate, turning directly from solid to gas under the sun's heat. Its tail stretched out under the force of solar radiation and the solar wind. From mid-July onward, Instruments around the world, including Hubble and the James Webb, had already gathered data indicating the comet's nucleus could be anywhere from 5.5 kilometers in diameter to as small as 300 meters, but its brightness made that estimation difficult. More interestingly, the James Webb Space Telescope and NASA's Spherex mission detected a coma dominated not by water vapor, as in most comets, but by carbon dioxide. The CO2 cloud, extended hundreds of thousands of kilometers from the core. That detail matters. In typical solar system comets, water sublimation dominates as they near the sun. But for 3i Atlas, carbon dioxide ruled. That suggests it may have formed in a much colder environment, perhaps in the distant outer regions of another star system, or that it had been thermally altered before being ejected into interstellar space. 
During those crucial 36 hours when Western telescopes were offline, Chinese observatories filled the silence. Their instruments captured continuous sequences of images, measuring brightness, color, and positional data with impressive precision. They recorded the comet's rising luminosity, its expanding coma, and a tail structure growing with every passing hour. Without those observations, scientists would have lost the peak of 3I Atlas's activity, the very heartbeat of the object. Their work wasn't poetic, it was methodical. Each telescope, positioned thousands of meters above sea level, operated in low humidity, thin air that minimized atmospheric interference. The telescope's mirrors, one to two and a half meters in diameter, funneled light into cooled CCD sensors that converted photon flux into digital data. Every exposure, typically 30 to 120 seconds, was timestamped with GPS precision accurate to within a millisecond. That synchronization is crucial. Even tiny timing errors can throw off positional data by thousands of kilometers when objects move this fast. Each image was stored in FITS format, the standard digital container for astronomical data, complete with all relevant metadata, telescope coordinates, filters, exposure time, temperature and sky conditions. Those files were automatically queued into high-performance servers that processed, calibrated, and transmitted them to central data hubs in Nanjing and Beijing. Even at sub-zero temperatures, those mountain observatories continued operating, powered by a combination of diesel backup and photovoltaic energy. By the time Western systems resumed operation, the Chinese servers had already collected hundreds of gigabytes of clean, timestamp data, enough to reconstruct the comet's entire trajectory through the blackout. The Ali Observatory in Tibet, the Qinghai Station near Dalingha, and the Yunnan Astronomical Observatory had each gathered continuous observations through multiple filters, allowing scientists to determine the comet's color index and infer the composition and size of its dust grains. The readings suggested unusually large, carbon-rich particles, another anomaly pointing to its alien origin. When Western telescopes finally came back online, 3I Atlas had already moved more than 1.2 million kilometers from its previous position. Without those eastern observations, reacquiring its location could have taken hours. But thanks to China's uninterrupted tracking, its coordinates were accurate within a few arcseconds, precise enough to aim the largest telescopes in the world directly at it again. What followed was an equally impressive digital effort. Every observation from the Chinese stations was uploaded to the National Astronomical Data Center in Beijing, where redundant data clusters operate at petabyte scale. Each file underwent checksum verification to ensure no corruption during transmission. Within hours, preview images were generated and made available publicly through China's virtual observatory portal. Routine updates that, at the time, quietly became the only new 3i Atlas data available anywhere on Earth. These images revealed subtle but meaningful changes. A 0.3 magnitude increase in brightness, an elongation of the coma suggesting a transient jet, and slight shifts in color ratios consistent with higher CO2 activity. Once those coordinates were submitted to the Minor Planet Center, the official orbital model for 3i Atlas was refined dramatically. Positional uncertainty dropped from roughly 25 arcseconds to less than 5, making future tracking far more accurate. Even with limited bandwidth from those remote mountain locations, data continued streaming overnight, compressed and layered until a continuous 36-hour timeline was complete. The next morning, when the world's largest telescopes turned their mirrors back toward the object, they weren't looking blindly. They were following China's data. In a quiet, routine upload, the observational history of an interstellar comet had been rewritten, but collecting the data was only half the battle. To turn raw photons into science, calibration and verification are essential. That means aligning each instrument's readings with known physical standards and confirming that the results are reproducible by independent teams. Western and Chinese observatories use different data reduction pipelines, different algorithms, and even different magnitude systems. To merge them, engineers had to reconcile every discrepancy, from wavelength calibration and flat field corrections to brightness zero points. Chinese teams use standard Landolt photometric sequences to anchor their brightness measurements, 
and matched those stars with the Sloan Digital Sky Survey's OB magnitude system. To ensure global consistency, spectra were calibrated using thorium argon and neon lamp emissions to keep wavelength errors under 0.05 nanometers, well within international tolerance. Astrometric alignment with the Gaia Doctor 3 catalog achieved positional accuracy within fractions of an arcsecond. These details may sound technical, but they're what transform images into truth. When those results were cross-checked independently by teams in Hong Kong and Taiwan, every value fell within accepted uncertainty. That consistency proved the data's integrity and allowed international scientists to integrate it seamlessly with Hubble and GWSD records. The result, a sharper, cleaner and more confident orbit model confirming that 3i Atlas remains on a hyperbolic path with an eccentricity of roughly 1.19, indisputably interstellar. And beyond the numbers lies the larger story, one about aperture, access and power. In astronomy, aperture doesn't just mean the size of a telescope's mirror. It also symbolizes reach, who gets to look, and who decides where the mirrors point. Of the world's 30 largest telescopes, most belong to Western consortia. China's instruments, while smaller, are more numerous and more flexible. Their automated systems can respond in real time, continuously tracking fast-moving objects, while the giant observatories schedule their nights months in advance. During the 3i Atlas blackout, this agility proved more valuable than size. Dozens of smaller mid-range telescopes, each operating independently but linked by software, achieved continuous monitoring that no single massive telescope could have maintained. By stacking hundreds of short exposures, the Chinese network reached a signal-to-noise ratio equivalent to that of an 8-meter telescope. They demonstrated that in the age of automation, vigilance can rival sheer power. The story of 3i Atlas is no longer just about a comet crossing our sky. It's about the fragile infrastructure of human observation, how coordination, or the lack of it, shapes our understanding of the universe. When half the planet's eyes are closed, the other half must keep watching. In those quiet mountain observatories under thin air and starlight, humanity's gaze never broke. And because of that, the data survived. The interstellar traveler continued its path, and we now know with certainty that it came from far beyond the sun's dominion. The carbon-rich dust, the frozen CO2, the shape of its coma, all of it whispers the same truth. 3i Atlas is not from here. And yet, for a brief moment, it became part of our story, captured not by the biggest mirrors, but by the ones that never blinked.